G'day everyone, how are we going? So if um, things look a bit different, if you can see my nose hairs, it's because I've got a new camera. So this is a Sony ZV-1 now, and this one will do 4K. I'm not going to film in 4K because that's going to be absolutely mental to edit and uh, put on my computer. But the 1080p on this camera should be better quality. This one's 20 megapixels compared to the old camera's 10. But uh, yeah, hopefully the quality comes out a bit better in the videos now, which will be good. Anyway, on to today's task. So what we're going to be doing is um, dropping the gearbox out of this patrol here, uh, this 2.8 patrol, and doing the rear main seal again. So I did the rear main seal on it about a year ago. Uh, had to, I pulled the engine out to do that then. Um, somewhere along the line, I made a mistake. Um, what it turns out is the engine actually had what's called a speedy sleeve on the shoulder of the back of the crank. Because this engine's old and it's done a lot of Ks, there's probably a chance that the actual sealing surface on the crank itself uh, has been damaged from all the lip seals it's had on it at each point. So I'm going to drop the gearbox out and then decide on how I'm going to go about putting it back together, whether I run another speedy sleeve. Uh, but also I'm going to try and diagnose why this seal didn't work because as far as I can see, I look back through my videos, it should have been okay, but I mean, who am I to know? So we'll uh, take it all apart again and inspect to see what happened. So before you launch a job like this in which you're going to have the vehicle taken out of commission for a couple of months or a couple of weeks, depending on how fast you're able to work, a uh, pretty good idea is to order all the parts that you think you're going to require to do the job before you actually do the job. So an easy way to identify what you think you're going to need before you start the job is to jump on a website called Parts SOUQ. So what this website allows you to do, you can just punch your VIN number straight into it and it'll take you to your exact vehicle, model, outfit and trim level. Once you're in this, you can select drivetrain, exhaust, engine, and pretty much all of the components of the vehicle. And what that allows you to do then is look through the exploded view or the exploded diagram of this assembly part. And it has annotated numbers for seals, gaskets, and any sort of perishable item that is replaced when serviced. And the best part about this is if you click on them, it actually has the OEM part that's required, the OEM seal. And then even if they're still being made or not, they have aftermarket seal recommendations, each having a different seal number or part number. And then if you want to, you can add all of the seals or parts together that you require into the cart built into the website. And then you can order them all through the website. The website purchases them uh, or outsources the purchases to different vendors. And then they're all brought in, uh, all shipped to you. And yeah, it's actually a really useful way of ordering all the parts you require before launching the job so that your car is still drivable. In this case though, because I wanted to get this done sooner, I just copied the part numbers from the website, uh, punched them into eBay as my name suggests, and I was able to order the input seal for the gearbox, which I'm going to do, as well as um, the shifter assembly because my shifter is sort of loose as a goose, you know, it dangles around. And then for the rear main seal, and the rear main seal housing because you know I'm gonna do everything right now to hopefully not make this leak again I ordered them off Golby's Parts so Golby's Parts is a performance racing um, web page or a performance racing shop over in Queensland somewhere and the actual rear main seal that the RD28 uses is the same as the RB25, the RB26 uh, same as the rear seal carrier as well so that's the cool thing about Nissan, most of the parts are transferable. I just ordered the same part number, which comes on the RB engines luckily, same as the carrier, and yeah, it's all delivered now. All the parts are here, um, whenever parts arrive, you know, give them a quick inspection, make sure they look all good, uh, and give them another thorough inspection before you install them on the vehicle.
Okay, so I've taken my roller door off, bit of an ordeal, to give me enough room to reverse the patrol in. And then I may um, throw the roller door back up just for security. Uh, it's just, it was sort of a shit design because the roller door actually hung down lower than that beam you see there. Uh, meaning that I wasn't able to get the patrol in. And uh, fingers crossed if I've done my measurements right, I should be able to come in. So the first job I've got to do before I drop my gearbox out is uh, change over the engine mounts in my car. One of the engine mounts is completely split in half and um, when I was putting the engine back in last year when I had the engine out I couldn't be bothered and I just threw it back in and it's been nothing but problems and headaches for me. So I'm going to swap over one of the engine mounts. One of them is still fine uh, but the one on the passenger side's split so we're going to give that a swap. Also, I'm going to be swapping to a bigger intercooler pretty soon, so that's going to be a fun fun job. That's going to lower my EGTs hopefully, but I'm also going to have to cut a bigger hole in the bonnet and uh, either make or run a different hood scoop, which will again be a bit involved, but should be a good benefit down the track. To get access to the engine mount, you're going to need to take off the intake pipe off the front of the turbo. What you need to do is take the weight of the engine as all of its mass is weighing down on these engine mounts and if you try and take some of the bolts out it's going to collapse on you so be very careful. Um, I tried first with using my engine crane uh, with a chain from the lifting points on the engine. This didn't work though because the engine crane only takes about 500-250 kilograms so what I found was a better option was moving my trolley jack under the car and using a block of wood to space out the weight on the oil pan of the engine and slowly coming up uh, and visibly watching the engine lift up. What I found was going to be easiest was to unbolt the engine mount from the engine block itself there's four bolts holding it into the engine block and then there's two bolts holding it down to the chassis of the car. Once I'd got it up and uh, managed to get it out of there, it was a bit of a manoeuvre, it was a bit difficult. Uh, you might need to use your pry bar just to get things out of the way. Once you've got your mount out, just uh, have a little bit of an inspection of it. As you can see, mine one was completely ruined. It was uh, completely stuffed. Um, you can use GQ engine mounts. They're both the same for the GU and the GQ. It is a bit of a bit of a fiddle to get the engine mount back in. Uh, the engine mount actually is under a bit of torsion or a bit of uh, stress when it's bolted into the car and the weight's lowered onto it. Uh, it actually pulls it forward. But I found um, I was able to just slightly screw the bolts in uh, for the engine mount into the chassis and then I loosely put in all four bolts into the engine block. Uh, I used my pry bar to position the engine around so that I was able to start each thread and then I slowly wound each thread in with my ratchet. Uh, didn't tighten them up fully, you just slowly go all of them in until they're all reasonably tight. Then you tighten them all up to uh, their requirement and um, everything should line up fine then. So to get access or to take your gearbox out, you're going to need to take the trims off the inside of the car. So you're going to have to take off both the gear stick lever and the transfer case lever. Um, they're just screwed on, you've got to just start screwing them to the left and they should pop off pretty easily. 
The trims will come off around the shifters. I think there's one or two bolts here and there to take them up. And then the shifter boot under the trim. Uh, there's a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts around the edges of it. So just pull them out and uh, it should pull off pretty easily. So you've got to take the gear sticks out to drop the box out just so there's uh, so they're not hanging around in your way because you've got to sling the gearbox to drop it. What you see on mine is that the actual shifter bushing assembly uh, is all all kinds of ruined. It's um, just been worn down to a point where it's split in half. The transfer case lever is a little bit more difficult. You've got to go under the car. There's a 10 millimeter nut which you've got to undo and then there's a taper pin which you have to knock up and what this will do is uh, release the tension holding the lever to the shaft and um, once it's knocked up you can just pull the lever off and it should come off easy. So before you take any of the drive shafts out, just uh, use a paint marker and uh, put some dots to align them. The reason for this is if you put them back out of rotation from what they were, there's a chance they might be unbalanced and you'll get some nasty vibrations throughout the drivetrain when you start driving. So to undo the bolts on the drive line, uh, it's a little bit of a fiddle and it can be quite annoying. To get the nuts off the back of the handbrake, I found putting the handbrake on fully, putting the car in fourth gear, uh, allowed me to put a ring spanner on the back of them, uh, or even a breaker bar, because one or two of them were quite tight. And I was able to hammer the breaker bar to get them to break loose, and the yoke wouldn't move because the handbrake was holding it. Same story for the back diff. Uh, with the handbrake on, I was able to crack each bolt loose. Uh, but do be careful when you're hammering on the spanner at the back here because you might load up the teeth uh, of the pinion and ring gear in the diff and do damage to them. With the front drive shaft, I attempted by locking the front hubs because I have an auto locking front diff and putting the car into gear, but I wasn't comfortable hammering them because I didn't want to do damage to the internals of the transfer case or the front diff. So what I ended up doing was taking it out of gear, unlocking the hubs so that the drive shaft spun freely. And then for the front of the drive shaft, for the front of the car, I reacted off my trolley jack with a spring spanner on the back of the nut. And then I used the double spanner technique to get enough torque to break all of the nuts loose. And then on the back of the front drive shaft, uh, up where the transfer case is, I used a ring spanner and reacted off the transfer case. And again, I used the double spanner method to get enough torque to break them. I came pretty close to threading or doing some damage to one of the two of the nuts, but I was able to get all of them off, no dramas, so I may be replacing one or two of them. Once all the bolts are out, you can go ahead and rip the drive shafts out. And then optionally, um, what I do suggest is uh, just pin punch match mark your drive shafts. Uh, this is because, you know, if you wash them down with um, cleaning product, you might actually wash the paint off it and then, well, you're a bit stuffed then because you won't be able to know which direction to put them back in and use different numbers of match marks for each point. And then once you've done that, it's a good idea to just preserve everything with um, lanolin or whatever oil, WD-40. Uh, just, you know, if they're going to be laying around for a while and out in the elements, uh, there's a chance they might get a little bit rusty. So it's good to get ahead and uh, just preserve it. So next is to unplug all of the plugs from the harness connecting to both the transfer case and the gearbox. So these plugs include the neutral switch, uh, the reverse switch, and then some of the switches from the transfer case to shoot the lights on your dash when you've got it in four wheel drive. And then also the speed sensor. And uh, <laughs> funny thing was my speed sensor wasn't plugged in. And I had no idea why my speedo wasn't working. You'll also need to take off the breather hoses. So the breather hoses are from the top of the gearbox up to a higher point in the car, just so if you go through a river, you don't fill your gearbox with water, which wouldn't be fun. So next is the handbrake cable. Uh, there's one nut holding it on to uh, a point on the chassis and then to get it out from where it latches on there's like a little pin that you have to pull through a hole. Uh, it's easy to do it with some long nose pliers to maneuver the end of the cable around and get the pin through the hole. Then you'll have the clutch slave cylinder. So the clutch slave cylinder has got a hydraulic line going to it that has uh, the clutch fluid or the brake fluid that it uses. So all you've got to do is just crack that one loose and uh, it'll start dribbling out some 
clutch fluid, so get ready with a container to catch that. And then once all of it's drained, you can unwind that line fully, and then you can unbolt the slave cylinder itself and remove it. Next, we've got the starter motor. So the higher bolt on the starter motor is easier to get from the top of the car, and then the lower bolt is easier to get from under the car. You'll have to also unbolt the positive line and the trigger for the solenoid. After the starter motor's out, you'll have to take off the brace wings from the engine block to the gearbox. Uh, it's just four bolts on each one. Uh, they can be a bit tight, so be prepared to get thumping with a hammer. A uh, rattle gun makes life a whole lot easier on that one. And then a good trick um, before you take all of the bolts out and drop the gearbox is make yourself up some dowel pins. So all these are, are just cheap bolts you can buy from a hardware store, the right thread of course. Um, lop the ends off and put slits in them so that you can use a flathead screwdriver and wind them into the bolt holes. This will make life a whole lot easier when you align the gearbox back up to the engine or engine to the gearbox if you're doing an engine out job. So now that all of this is off, you're able to now manoeuvre the crane through the driver's door and position it straight above the gearbox. I used a one ton sling, uh, which I was able to wrap around the gearbox to give me a good balance point. Uh, here's a photo for reference that an awesome bloke posted up on uh, RD28 Patrol Owners, great page, uh, recommend you get on it. I don't know if you're able to use chains in this instance, uh, I do suggest using a soft sling, much easier. So once you've got the sling on there, you can connect up your crane and just slowly take up the weight until the sling gets taut, and then with this done you can slowly and evenly start undoing the last eight bolts holding the cross member on. So just slowly take one of them down at a time and um, the gearbox might start to come down as you loosen the last two off. If this is the case, take up a little bit more slack on the crane and you should see it lift itself up. Once you've done this and you know that the gearbox is being supported by the crane only, you can go ahead and take all the bolts out from the cross member. Just be a little bit careful because as you undo the very last bolt, it might move a tiny bit. So just be mindful of that. Once all of the bolts are out and it's just the crane holding the gearbox up, slowly come down on the weight. The engine's gonna pivot on the engine mounts as you lower the gearbox down until the head hits on the back of the firewall. This is gonna stop the engine from moving further and as you then drop the gearbox down more, that should break the seal of the silicon that you used when you made it up last time to stop the water getting into the bell housing. Once this has been done, the gearbox should start to loosen up and be free. Just be careful because it'll still be a little bit front heavy. Uh, I actually had to lower mine down and uh, redo the sling because I wanted to get it to pivot a little bit more as uh, I wasn't able to move the gearbox back because the sling was hitting the cutout in the body for the shifter. So come back up on the crane a little bit and then you can move the whole gearbox back either by jumping in the car and pulling back on the sling or just pushing the crane back by hand. The gearbox will droop down forward so just be quite careful because uh, it's a lot of weight on there and uh, can move kind of fast. Once the gearbox is dangling by its own weight, you can slowly come down on the crane until it rests evenly. Just be very, very careful because you'll see just there, I almost came down on my own hand. It's probably better to grab someone else for this, but uh, I was comfortable doing it solo and I managed to do it. Once your gearbox is out, you can go ahead and pat yourself on the back, have a little celebration. Uh, the hard work's done now, so now you can get on and uh, do whatever you're doing for having the gearbox out, either doing your box rebuild or doing your rear main seal like I'll be doing. So I'll have another video coming up in the very near future on doing my rear main seal, but unfortunately I've got a holiday coming up to go to Brisbane for two weeks, 
Uh, I've got my entire extended family living over there, so I'm going to see them for the first time in two years since the Rona's hit. So if you're going to leave a job halfway through, well, it's a work in progress. Uh, it's a good idea to preserve everything so that there's no rust or corrosion build up as you're away from the job. So I decided since I'd already put my clutch back together, uh, you'll see the, all of this work down the track again. So I decided to get a packet of silica gel. So these are little silicon balls, I believe, which um, act as a water desiccant or a water absorbent uh, so that no moisture builds up and uh, corrodes surfaces. So I just uh, sticky taped a bunch of bubble wrap on the back of my clutch that had already been made and then threw that packet in and uh, it should be good for the next two weeks. So I want to thank everyone for taking the time to watch this video. I really hope it was helpful and uh, I'll have another video coming up in the very near future and I hope everyone stays tuned.